Hi everyone, I hope you're doing alright. Now today I thought I'd talk about how IBS affects my mental health. So, you know, we always say that all our IBS symptoms are in our gut and are in our stomach and everything and down here, but really it affects so much up here as well. These two things seem to be massively linked, so I thought today I'd just talk about that. Okay, so the first way that IBS affects my mental health is that it never ends. IBS doesn't have a cure and IBS affects me every single day of the week, so I get a lot of bloating and pain and constipation and everything there is every single day and I know that it's not gonna end. Well, like it might improve in some way, but you know, they always say that we are all so different with our IBS, our guts are all so different, so there isn't a cure and therefore whilst it may improve, it's always gonna be there and that I really struggle with. It's just like, you know, if you're in a queue um, for I don't know, a ride at a theme park and you don't know how long the queue's gonna be, you get really impatient and stuff. But if you know how long and you know, oh, it's only five minutes, you can deal with it. But when you can't, when you don't know how long it's gonna be, it just, it's difficult. And so I find that the fact that it's never gonna end really puts a damper on my brain and makes me feel quite disheartened and yeah, quite sad in a way, because I know that really, although I can improve it, this IBS mess of a stomach of mine is always gonna be there. The next way in which IBS affects my mental health kind of follows on from the first point in that I always have constant, constant symptoms. So I'm always bloated. Even when I'm a little less bloated, I am still bloated. I'm very different in how I look to when I didn't have IBS. I used to have a relatively flat stomach and now my stomach is always quite expanded. It always looks to some degree pregnant, whether that be like, I don't know, seven weeks pregnant or 30 weeks pregnant. I don't even know about pregnancy and stuff, but I always look pregnant. When you look in the mirror and you see that, and I mean, I tend not to look in the mirror. I avoid it at all costs because it doesn't make me feel good. But when I do, yeah, it makes me feel bad. It makes me feel self-conscious. It makes me feel down. And just all the other symptoms like excessive gas and wind and stuff like that, that makes me very conscious like going out into a public space and stuff what if you know what if that happens and that in itself just makes me feel pretty crap so it affects my mental health a lot in that way too next up is the fact that i have so many food intolerances the list is endless and because of that i really struggle to eat out i want to eat out i love eating out as you know with what i do as a job i love food i make recipes all the time I like to go to restaurants but it is really difficult and I feel like I always end up just going to the same old restaurants that I always go to and very rarely like if someone asks me to go to a restaurant I might think twice about it because you know it's a whole really stressful situation where you can't just go and look at the menu when you're there you have to look at the menu before you might have to call up the restaurant you might you know you have to consider so many different things before you actually get to eat out and then it just makes you feel like, what is the point? So I think the multiple food intolerances issue, which obviously, you know, I retry foods and see if I can tolerate them from time to time. Um, but nine times out of 10 now, I've really found what I can and cannot eat. And the list is so long that it just makes, it makes life difficult. Like if you can eat a lot of food, just think about it, if you suddenly were unable to eat garlic and onions and bread and loads of vegetables, how that would impact your life. You know, you think of other things as impacting your life, but food is something that we eat every single day. We have to eat food to live. And if you suddenly are told that you can't eat this, that, this, that, this, that, think about how that would affect you. It does affect me massively and it is a struggle. My next point stems from the fact that I've found that doctors that I've gone to see just don't get IBS. and when doctors don't understand IBS completely, or at least the ones that I've been to, I mean, some probably understand it amazingly, but when they don't get it, I feel very alone because I go to the doctors for that support medically and for that support, even that support like mental health wise, just for them to accept it, understand it, give me solutions or just support and help. And if they don't understand it, that does make me feel very alone because I go to the doctors and I've been, I can't even think how many times I've been to the doctors about my stomach, not even just saying, oh, my IBS is playing up, but worried that it might be something else, that there's something not quite right. Or maybe if I could go down a different path and have some different tests done. And they just seem to be 
always the same, same old. Even when I've been referred to gastroenterology last time, as you know if you watched my previous videos, um, I was just given a load of laxatives and that wasn't very encouraging to me and I come out of the doctors or the hospital just feeling disillusioned and even worse than when I went in because I went in so optimistic and positive and you know for once my mental health was good with my IBS because I was like right whatever happens it's going to be good I've got some really qualified person who's going to tell me what's happening with my body and maybe give some solutions and I come away just thinking what was the point I I, I don't know it, it makes you just feel so down about it because if a doctor can't help you then really who can finally my last point in how IBS has affected my mental health is that Nobody seems to understand and because of that I feel alone. It's not just doctors who don't understand, it is so many people around me. So in the past when I worked in an office I felt very isolated with my IBS because people didn't quite understand why I felt bad or why I couldn't eat certain things or why I couldn't come into work some days, even that sort of thing was questioned. and. That just made me feel incredibly alone because when you do come back in the office, people sort of think, oh, why was she off? And that that's, you know, it just makes you feel terrible. And yeah, just generally, my social life, I feel, as a result of having IBS, has become a lot worse, a lot less. I mean, if I'm completely honest, I don't feel like I have had the most party-like, crazy social life ever, really. I've not been one of those people who's had the biggest social life in the world, but I feel that my IBS has really affected it in a negative way because I sometimes don't feel like going out, I'll sort of turn an offer down, well I very rarely get offers now, but that's the thing, I might have turned one offer down because I felt so bad and what is the point of going out when you can barely stand up and you feel sick and everything's going on inside you, you don't want to go out and then because you turn one offer down or a couple of offers down, those people don't come back to you and you can explain to them all you want that you know you don't feel well and you've got your IBS is really playing up but people just don't get it and they think that you're just having well you, you just don't really fancy going out and you just feel a bit tired and whatever and then they feel like they don't want to ask you again and even when you do go out socially I never feel quite right you know it stems back to not being able to eat things and it being a bit awkward maybe especially in the past I really felt with my IBS I couldn't drink alcohol which I've started to incorporate back in now successfully which is very good, but in the past, and I know a lot of you still struggle with alcohol and IBS, you kind of feel a bit out of place if you go on like a night out kind of thing, because everyone else is drinking, and I mean, you don't need alcohol to have fun, but there is this thing, if everyone else is drinking, they all find something funny and you sit there like a bit like, what, what is so funny? So yeah, I, I think that is a massive thing, that people just don't get it, they don't understand, and with that, you feel like this teeny tiny person in a big world alone. But from that last point of feeling isolated and alone, you don't have to, I'm here. <laughs> I'm literally here and as I just said, I sometimes feel alone and therefore I have tons of time to chat to you guys and just, you know, we should do this. We might be miles away, we might be across the world, we might be just in another town in in the county I live in, I don't know, we might be close, we might be far, but we can talk online, we can chat and tell each other about our awful IBS stories because we all get it, I get what you're going through, you probably get what I'm going through and because we're going through it, we don't care about the more what other people would call gruesome stories about our guts, our bowel habits and all that, it's fine. Thank you so much for watching this video today, I hope that these points about IBS and mental health have helped you have just related to you and you kind of maybe didn't think about these things in the same way but now you do you know it just makes you feel like you're not alone really because this is how I feel and if you feel like that as well it's okay it's fine it's fine to struggle it's fine for your mental health to be put a bit down because your IBS it's not it's not uncommon you don't have to feel like you're weird or anything it's, it's completely cool and there is definitely ways that you know just by talking to each other that we can try and improve that and try and make us feel that little bit better and make our mental health go from like here to maybe here maybe not that much further maybe for some people really high but it's it's difficult definitely difficult but again thank you very 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 much for watching I really hope you've enjoyed it and if you have 
Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots of videos like this. And if you've got any ideas for future videos you'd like me to do about IBS, gut health, mental health, all that stuff, let me know in the comments and I will endeavour to try and do them. Um, yeah, also, just go up here and follow me on Instagram because that's where I post the most, I chat the most, I chat on my story a lot about how my stomach feels and my IBS and how I'm feeling in my head because I just, I like to waffle sometimes as you can tell by how much waffling has gone on in this video. Anyway, I will see you all very soon. Have a lovely rest of your day. 